Hi guys, this is Melissa with Two Peas in the Bucket, and I'm back with another another installment of Project Life for you this week. And today I'm going to cover a question that somebody asked about what to do with a week that had an event that you took a lot of photos at. And I have two stacks of photos here, all from the same week, and I'm going to share several ideas for including extra photos on your Project Life pages. I'm going to be using supplies from American Crafts' new Mayberry collection. And I'm going to start with the first idea I have for including new photos, or including extra photos, which is probably the most obvious, and that is to use an insert. If you're not familiar with an insert in Project Life, it's nothing more than an extra page that you put between the two pages for your weekly layout. Um, adjust that if you do Project Life on a monthly basis or whatever time period. You would just include extra layouts between what you would normally do. When I do an insert, you can see that it's usually very, very simple. I'm using Becky Higgins Design G, and I normally will just print photos to fill the pockets up completely and not do little collages like I do on my weekly spreads. I don't add a lot of extra embellishment. Um, I usually will add a journaling card or two if there's some, like, something extra I need to tell to add to the story. But I like for my project life layouts to take an hour uh, at most. And, and so I try to not add a lot of complexity with, with extra inserts. With the photos in, I'm going to set this aside and start working on the main weekly spread. Now you've seen me do this several times before. I've got the photos stacked up from the earliest in the week to later in the week. And I'm just going to arrange them to try to find a good balance across the page. And these three photos, these three 4 by 6s I'm going to use to show another way to add extra photos. So I'll set two of them aside. One of them is actually going to show in the page protector, and I'm just going to go through and try to find spaces for the rest of these. I also make small photo collages with my phone or with Lightroom to help add extra photos to my pages. One thing you might want to think about when deciding which photos to include in Project Life is whether or not you really need to include the extra pictures. If Project Life isn't your only form of scrapping and you do regular layouts as well, a lot of those photos are probably going to end up in your regular scrapbook albums, and it may not be necessary to put them in Project Life. So you'll see me on this layout show you three or four different techniques for including photos, and I'm going to do them all in the same layout. Normally I wouldn't do that, it's just basically for the sake of showing you some of the different ways to do it. But really think about editing yourself and editing the photos that you're going to include on a page as you're printing so that maybe you won't have to add quite so many pictures at one time. So let's take a look at another way to add extra pictures to your layout, and that is to make a photo flap. I have three 4x6 photos, but you could do this with a photo collage or with journaling cards, and I'm going to use my tape runner to add adhesive all around the edges of one of the photos. And I have a little bit of an adhesive buildup on one section, so let me pull that off and come right back and show you the rest of this. Okay, so what we want to do is position this photo so that when it flips up, it's right side up, and you can open it like a window or, an, or a horizontal page in a book. So I'm going to adhere the other 4x6 photo over the top. This is the one that you'll see on top of the page protector, and stack them all up, and then use washi tape to adhere them all together. I'm just going to tear off a small strip. This is from Woodland Park by, Echo, by, by October Afternoon. I happen to think that the Woodland Park collection is a good mix for Mayberry that I'll be using. So I'm going to run that across the top and then lay the photos down, line them up, and fold that tape over so that it holds them all together, basically binding it very loosely like a book. And this will work if your pocket opens to the front side of your page. Uh, this one doesn't, so I'm going to actually move it to the top. These are the, Both those sets of photos are from the Botanical Garden, so it doesn't hurt anything with the continuity to switch them around. And now I can open that up, and we have three photos where one used to be. A fourth way to add extra photos is to use a pocket. There are lots of little bags and pockets in the shop that you can use for this. These are by Simple Stories from the Snap Line, and I'm going to pick up a few extra photos from the gardens. I think I went a little crazy taking photos of flowers this week. And just tuck them inside. 
And the new Simple Stories page protectors that will be in the shop soon have true to size 3x4 pockets. And these little pockets actually will fit inside of those. So as soon as they are in stock, I'll do another page protector comparison with those. But for now, I've cut apart that Mayberry uh, journaling card sheet, and I'm just looking for spots to add my journaling cards in and trying to keep a color balance going. So you'll see that snap pocket is pink, and it's reflected in that little so darn cute pink journaling card on the other side. I've got green going on both sides as well as in lots of photos in this layout. And now I need some patterns for two 4x6 pockets and there happen to be two 4x6 patterns on the page. Um, I might try this pink calendar date print in the top and the yellow on the bottom. The only problem is I really like that yellow pattern. I don't want to cover it up that much. Um, there's pink all over the back of both of these, but I don't think that my husband would appreciate being put on a pink striped background, so maybe I'll try that behind Sophie instead and look for something different to go in that pocket. We'll see what happens. Uh, just flip through the rest of these, and instead I'll go to some cards from another one of the cut-apart sheets in the Mayberry collection. And I was pretty excited that there was an entire sheet of just journaling cards without patterns and there are several of each so it makes it really easy to put matching elements in and as soon as I put that yellow journaling card down I realized that that yellow pattern would be very pretty up top with the pictures of my brother and Sophie and also match very well and as soon as I put that pink card down I realized that I wasn't a big fan of the pink diagonal next to the green diagonal stripes and I'm trying to decide whether to swap the Bridge Street photos or the So Darn Cute journaling card in, and obviously So Darn Cute won. And I did find something to go behind the photos of Darren and I at the gardens. It's another piece of the blue paper from Mayberry. I cut a 4x6 piece of it out, and now I have this little collage that I'm going to put on the, uh, on the 3x4 piece from the same set. The last spot I need to fill is behind the two pages from the Botanical Gardens. Obviously, I love taking pictures there. And I'm going to use this yellow journaling card from one of the June printables. It's meant to go horizontally, but I'm going to put it vertically and just handwrite a little something in that label area. And the last spot I need to put in journaling cards is in my insert. I have another one from one of the different printables from the digital shop along with a blue diagonal stripe from the Mayberry collection. And after I add journaling to these two cards, I'm not going to do anything else to this insert and just leave it as it is. And there you can see what it'll look like when it's finished. I am going to, however, show you one last way to add extra photos to your layouts by using a similar method that I did for the photo flap, but this time we're going to put a tab between two photos to make a pullout. I have a couple more photos of my dad and Sophie, and I've put adhesive around all the edges of one, and now I'm putting a little bit of adhesive on a tab, and I'm going to stick it right at the top of one of the photos. And then I will be layering the other photo over the top of it so that they form one card with a tab at the top. And once that tab is complete, I can slip it in behind the other photos, and it's obvious that there's something there that can be pulled out, so it's a little bit interactive. And it's another way to get just a couple more photos onto your page. It is now almost time to embellish, but first I need to take all of these journaling cards off to the printer. So now we're back and ready to start adding some little bits and pieces to the page. And I want to use a label down in the corner. And I had these labels from The Sweetest Thing by My Mind's Eye. And I wanted a sort of solid one, but there wasn't one that would work for me in the, in, on that sheet. So I'm taking this date label and hanging it off the side like it's a label wrap. And I will just trim off the end. And I'll save that little piece that says date in case I need it on another layout. But it's left me the perfect little pink spot to just write a couple of lines about the cupcakes that didn't make it into the typed journaling. I want to add something down at the bottom of this card. There's a lot of pink going on in that area, so I'd like to break it up with some green or blue or some of the other colors from this collection. And also from Woodland Park. Like I said, this was a good match for Mayberry, so I'm going to pull one of the green chipboard buttons out. 
and use it at the bottom and I need to dig out these two little holes. I don't tie strings through my buttons. I tend to be a little bit lazy about that. I know that some people like them stitched and it doesn't bother me to leave them undone. I'd love to use one of these big flower stickers, but they are just a little bit too large for the card. On the back though, there is a border strip of florals and I'm just going to cut a tiny little piece off of that and use it as a layer up underneath that button. So I'll just go ahead and stick it down to the card and put the button on it. And right away, I do not like the way that looks. I think I've left a bit too much showing. So let's just pull that sticker right back up and try adhering this a different way. I'm going to attach it to the button first and then put the entire thing on as one piece and see how that goes. And that's much, much better. And now I'll just come in with some yellow enamel dots and put a couple of those in to finish off this little cluster. And that'll be that for that card. I like to do just quick and easy embellishment when I'm doing a project life layout. Next up, I'm going to embellish on this photo collage. And when I have these, I like to do it at the intersection or the join. And I'm going to choose one of the 10 pins, one of the flare buttons from October Afternoon's Woodland Park collection. And at first I'm thinking maybe these florals since it's from the Botanical Gardens, but there's nothing else on this page that really has that aqua in it. So that's not going to work. I'll pull it back up and instead go with this pink, the story of today. Since there's not a lot of pink going on on the, le on the left side of the page, it'll help balance things out anyway. So just stick that down right there in the middle. The next spot to embellish is right below this photo collage of my brother and his little daughter. And I'm going to use some pink paisley artisan words. These are colorable elements and I'm going to use a Bic Market pen. Um, these are not in the shop, but you can get them at Target or Walmart or Amazon. And they're alcohol based markers, but they are permanent. So they work like a Sharpie, though they don't smell like a Sharpie, thank goodness. And to go off on a complete tangent of something I'm not even doing on this layout, since they're alcohol based, they'll also blend like Copics. So it's kind of an inexpensive alternative. So I'm just going to finish coloring this in and let it dry before I come back and add it to my page. It only takes a few seconds for it to dry on this material and then I can just peel it off. And these are kind of soft and spongy and a little bit flexible, so they're really kind of fun to work with. And I'm going to play a little game of left side, right side and decide where I want to put this before going back to the right side, which was where my gut was telling me to put it in the first place. And like I do with most of the embellishments, I'm going to go ahead and cluster a few small items around in here, thinking some enamel dots. And since there are some little pops of red in the flowers and the strawberries in this collection, I'll add in a red enamel dot, and then I'm going to grab my green embellishment drawer. Again, Target. Um, I get these, they come in a little set of three. They're the medium Sterilite drawers. I don't think they have them online anymore, but they're definitely in the store. And I found a set of green enamel dots. I'm just looking to see if there's any that are darker, but there aren't, and these will be just fine. So I'm gonna peel off a couple of those and add them to the cluster to finish this card off. Next spot to embellish is the bottom of the snap pocket. I don't want to put a whole lot on here, but I'm thinking something in the corner or right on the edge will be good. And right away, this blue doily, since there's not a whole lot of blue going on in that area, grabs my attention. And I think I'm only going to use half of it. So let's figure out where to position it. Um, it looks like right there is good, except it's probably better if I flip it upside down and actually ground that edge along the bottom of the pocket. We'll just stick that in place and cut it in half and save that other half to use another day. And I could add a few more items to the bottom of that pocket, but honestly, I like it just that way. So we'll just leave it like that. And the last little place to put a couple of pieces is on this yellow card. I'm going to use one of the exclusive Freckled Fawn Arrow paper clips that we have in the shop. And then I'm taking one of the asterisks which looks like a little flower from the Thickers for the Mayberry collection. I'm going to, going to use it as an embellishment here on this card. 
And as you can probably guess, I'm also going to include an enamel dot. This is one of the same green ones that you saw me use on the card on the opposite page. And when I sort my embellishments by color, I will absolutely just cut those enamel dot sheets into strips and put each strip in the appropriate color drawer, and it makes it a whole lot easier to find what I need. The last thing I'm going to add in is the date with a roller date stamp. I'm just using a plain library stamp this time and some VersaFine ink to finish things off. So your creative challenge this week goes one of two ways. If you need to add extra photos to your layout, whether it be Project Life or traditional, use one of the strategies that I've shown here. You can also choose to cue off of the custom colored fun embellishment and make your own custom colored item for your layout this week. Either way you go, I'm so very glad that you watched today and I hope that you have a great week.